Good old Talladega week. Twitter was very fun this morning. <laughs> the infield of Talladega was something else. By the way, the amount of bookmarks I'm seeing uh, on those videos, guys, come on, really? That's that's crazy. That's why you guys are wild. And all right, stop thinking down there. Start thinking up here a little bit. Uh, but let's talk about the race and uh, let's talk about commercials, because that's unfortunately one of the talking points of this race. I, that's, it was just it was pathetic. Oh, yeah, yeah. Comment down below what you thought about this Talladega race, because uh, I'm interested to see what people say about it. It, it was unique, very unique. I, I, I really am quite confused on how to talk about this race because, well, there was 23 different leaders. For 70% of the race, they weren't going hard. Like, I, I don't know how to explain it, but this felt like one of those races where I want to compare it to a Tour de France stage. And what I mean by that is if anyone has watched cycling, if you do like a, a 190 kilometer stage, the first 160 kilometers of the stage, you can literally sleep through. It does not matter. You're just trying to get to the end. And then the final 30 kilometers of the stage, you go for it. And usually in NASCAR, I wouldn't say for 70% of the race, you're just trying to get to the end. Now, everyone is trying to get to the end. But this was another level of trying to get to the end. And mainly that has to do with the fuel strategy and the fuel saving. So that's the biggest talking point of this race is the fuel saving. Now, how does this happen? Well, it's not really a car thing. It's more of a crew chief thing. The crew chiefs got really smart um, and, and they saw that, you know, you can save because this car has a ton, a ton of drag that you can save a lot of fuel like in the draft people figured that out people figured out that you could save multiple laps then you just take less time on pit lane because track position is so important in this car if you are going all out it's very difficult to pass in this car even at a plate track so if you can just cycle yourself to the to, to whatever front position you can by doing that is saving fuel in the pack so you t spend less time on pit road so you cycle to the front to, before the end of the stage comes out and that is the plan of what everybody is trying to do so it means if we have a 60 lap stage and you basically run 40 of those laps, you know, saving fuel, then obviously for 66% of the stages, we're not really racing. We're just kind of half throttle around the racetrack and it's, that's kind of how it is. Stage one was like that. Stage two was like that. Stage three was even more like that because of a caution that came out with around 55 to go. Puts it right into the fuel mileage game. So now everyone's trying to make it on fuel. So before the Toyotas decided to crash themselves, it was again like that. So the majority of this race was always about saving fuel. And that's why I asked you guys, what did you think about it? Because in my opinion, watching it, this is... You have multiple different forms of plate racing that has changed throughout the years. Going way back to the early 2000s, you had, uh, you know, kind of more spread out pack racing. And then it kind of got a little bit closer together. And then you had the tandem drafting. And then you had the Gen 6 bubble where the leader was impossible to pass. And then you had the next gen car come in where the runs are like insanely high and then there's too much crashing. And then you have kind of like a nice little balance where it's up to the drivers and the runs. And now you kind of have this fuel strategy game because the crew chiefs kind of realized, hey, you got to save fuel and, and position yourselves. You also have this, the, the current draft package is one where both at Daytona and Talladega, if you are going all out, if you're going flat footed, everyone's trying to go all out. It's a two lane pack. You can't get the third lane going. And even if you do get it going to an extent, someone's going to jump up there and you have to check up so much that it's going to kill the momentum of that line. So the story of this next gen car as it is for many of the tracks we go to is about momentum. Momentum is very crucial with this car and it has the same thing to do with super speedways. It's all about momentum. So it's just a very weird and different type of plate racing. And I'm going to be honest, I didn't really enjoy the race today. It's eye candy. Like they were racing three wide, but I can tell you right now, the three wide racing was, it was like a mirage. It was fake. Like, they were all just trying to save fuel. Everyone in every single lane, including the leaders of the lanes. They all just wanted to save. And I knew that while watching. So, okay, I mean, yeah, they're three wide through the field, but they're not really trying to race. I guess the complaint I have is that, I mean, what's the point other than the pit stops? I, I don't know. It, it feels... 
It feels weird to complain about it because it's not anyone's fault. That's the thing. It's like, it's just the style of racing it is. You know what I mean? I'm not trying to be negative on it. It's just that if I'm watching that race, I genuinely am just bored because I'm like, okay, we're just going to ride around for 35 laps until the pit stops. The pit stops are the interesting part to see who cycles out in first. And then the final 10 laps of the stage, they actually try to race for it. So the most entertaining parts of these races are the end of the stages. And then you caution comes out, it cycles through, and then you do it again. Now, if you take stages out, it, it, this gets worse. If you take stages out, there's no cautions. Everyone's just constantly saving fuel for the whole thing. And that's kind of what you see on iRacing. In the iRacing races, you see the same thing where everyone just saves fuel, no one tries, and it's just a fuel saving race for the entire thing. It's the amount of drag that this car has that causes that. And so it's just very interesting. So again, what do you guys think? That's what the story of this race was, is just absolute ungodly fuel saving. And so it's just very interesting to see that and, and see how that kind of kind of plays out. It was, it was, meh. Two Penske boys of Austin Sindrick and Joey Logano won the stages. Then you get to the end of the race. And and again, with the, the pit strategy, what the Toyotas were doing were very, very weird. They pit with like 35 to go. And it's only like six of them. And yeah, I don't know what they were thinking. I think the crew chiefs and the teams have done this long enough to where, at least in my opinion, what you want to do is you want to stay in the lead pack as long as possible. Because if you stay in the lead pack as long as possible, if you are the one of the last ones to pit then what you get to do is you get to merge onto the racetrack and block the lines. That's what Logano and Sindrick are doing towards the end of stage two. They were going to get trained by, by the rest of the field, but you block the lines, you swerve, and it's risky, but that's what you do. That's what we see in the majority of play races. You don't pit early. That's the one thing you don't do. You don't pit early because it's better to be in a 25 to 30 car field than in a six car pack. It doesn't matter if you go single file, you're not going to go faster than the car, the pack that has the 25 cars because the energy is more in that pack. I guess what they were thinking was that the leaders were going to continue partial throttling it and, and they would instead go full throttle. But as soon as the Toyotas decided to pit, then the rest of the field is like, okay, we'll just go full throttle. It, it, it doesn't like, it does you're not going to catch them off guard. So I, I, I really didn't understand that. I, I, I did not understand what the Toyotas were doing. And then they crashed themselves because they were trying to, to go as fast as possible in the single file line by pushing and everything. They crashed themselves. It was a very violent hit for Eric Jones. But uh, that was all because of the, the, the strategy. That was a very, very stupid strategy. And it's stupid because we've seen in the years of this car, of this type of play racing, you kind of know what you should do. You should pit late. If you pit late, that's a good thing and for some reason they uh yeah i don't know why they decided to try to short pit 35 laps so that brings out a caution everyone gets on now it's no more fuel saving so you think like the end of this race is going to be fun because with 28 to go 27 to go there's no more fuel saving like there's no more of that nonsense we've been de dealing with the whole race we're ready to go and then no one can go anywhere <laughs> michael mcdowell basically leads from 27 to go to the end of the race it's a two lane, that's it, just traffic jam. Nobody can go anywhere. I mean, I don't know, man. It just, this race did not, in my opinion, it was not very good for, for the standard that is plate racing. I remember saying the Daytona 500 was a very good Daytona 500, and it was, other than the, you know, the first 50 laps of the race where they decided to, you know, go 50% throttle. The Daytona 500 was a lot of fun. This race, it showed the worst of both situations. It showed the worst of the fuel saving and it showed the worst of when they try to go for it, no one can go anywhere. You come around going to the final lap, Michael McDowell tries to block. He blocks too much, goes off the front bumper, Keselowski, everyone crashes, yippee, everyone crashes. Tyler Reddick steals the win. It's a fun finish, uh, entertaining finish. But getting to that final lap was just a chore. It felt like a chore. It just nothing was, you know, it didn't feel like it was very entertaining and what could happen. It just felt like, well, kind of know how this is going to come down. They're going to have to, you know, one of these two lanes is going to prevail and then second place is going to make a move and you're gonna, it is what it is. And then we get to, I think, the main reason why I'm in kind of a bad mood. And that is the broadcast. I have given the broadcast as much, you know, passes as i can this year guys i've not been talking about the broadcast i gave them props in the 500 i said the vox fox broadcast was good in my opinion i gave them props today was despicable truly despicable 
The booth lacked energy. Let that let that be. They just lacked energy. The the finish of the race, the call was lacking energy. The majority of the stage finishes lacked energy. The production. Oh my god. Oh my god. So I don't normally talk about commercials, guys. You guys know me. I don't nor I even said it before. I don't mind commercials early in the race if it means the end of the race has less commercials. I'm fine with that. Guys, they had six commercial breaks in 53 laps. Stage one was 60 laps. Six commercial breaks in stage one alone is unbelievable. And then to make it worse, in stage two, we know, the producers should know, the main parts of the race that you need to watch for this type of racing is the green flag pit stops and the final 10 laps of after the green flag pit stops. If you want to take the commercials in that little 30 lap stint before that or 30 or 40 lap stint before the green flag pit stops happen. If you want to take the commercials there, take the commercials there. You can take the commercials during the stage breaks. The stage breaks were meant for the commercials. That's the point of what the stages are for when they first were introduced, okay? They went to commercial with five to go. Five to go. Five at a plate track. I lost, I guys, I lost, I don't want to curse. I lost my SHI, I lost it. When I saw that, I swear to God, I lost it. I went on Google and I tried looking up the names of the production team. I'm not going to say their names. I'm not going to say their names. There are producers that are probably very nice people there and they're most likely not in charge. The people in charge of the production team of Fox, I've said this for years, they have to be let go. The, the top executives have to be let go. I have never seen such incompetence. Five to go in a stage. They bring out a caution. Six commercials in stage one. It's a joke. It's a joke. And unfortunately, I can't find their freaking names. I know some of their names, but I don't know their positions. I'm try I was trying to find the production team. The I want the names. I want the names now. Someone take responsibility. Not Mike Joy. Mike Joy shouldn't have to sit up there and try to defend the commercials and all this crap. I want the names of the people calling the shots. Because it's stupid now. It's pathetic. Fox is a joke. The quicker you get to NBC, the better. Just a joke, man. Just a joke. It's not hard. I get you have to make your commercials and make your money. I get it. It's not hard to place them where they should. Who made the call to do a full screen ad break with five to go? Full! Full, guys. Full. My head hurts. My genuine head hurts. Oh, my God. There was another moment in the race. I don't remember exactly where it was. Actually, I do remember. I do actually I do remember exactly where it was. Oh god. It was the cycle of the end of the green flag pit stops. In the end of the green flag pit stops, the, the dry they're they're merging together. Like the teams are starting to merge together. It's a very important part of the, the, the race because it determines the track position for the end of the stage. And they go into a full blown one minute Wendy's ad. They cut away from the race and they go into a full blown one minute Wendy's ad that Mike Joy has to read and you come back and the field is then settled. The most important part of the last 30 minutes that we were watching where they were pussyfooting it around the track, it doesn't matter. When the field starts getting in, you know, situated, they get their track position to go for the end of the stage. We don't see it because the camera cuts away for a full minute Wendy's ad. I swear to God, guys, I lost my goddamn mind. I swear to God. This is not Mike Joy's fault. It's the production team. They don't understand how these races work. They don't get it. They don't get it. They want us to watch the boring parts of the stage of going 50% throttle. But hey, guys. They're going three wide. It looks cool. Nothing's happening. Everyone's riding around. You can go to commercial then. I never get this worked up about commercials. Never. This was stupid, guys. Stupid. Absolutely pathetic. Probably going to get a noise complaint now in my apartment. Oof. I've never gotten a noise complaint, by the way. <laughs> Oof. Oh, God. Okay. Let's go to the race. My head is hot, guys. My head's hot. Let's go to the race results. Tyler Reddick, Brad Kozlowski, Noah Graxson. 
Stenhouse, Bowman, and Alfredo. The race results, basically fifth on down, are crazy because of the final wreck. Redick wins for Toyota. He did a very good job. He was, you know, leading that outside lane for the majority of the time. He gets, you know, the, the Keselowski clears him, tries to make the move. They wreck themselves. Redick just goes around the outside, wins the race. So, good job for him. Uh, Keselowski, Graxon, Stenhouse, Bowman, Alfredo, Byron, Gill, and Hemrick, and Harrison Burton round out your top 10 in the lottery of just trying to get through the wreck. Uh, Michael McDowell, who was leading the last 50 laps of this race, ended up finishing in 31st. So, like I said, it's a lottery coming across the start-finish line. Uh, Martin Trex Jr., Briscoe, Chastain, Priest, Elliott, Barry, Hosovar, LaJoy was, like, upside down coming across the start-finish line. Uh, Lugano, Blaney, Larson, the rest of the field. Uh, Shout-out to SVG. In his first plate race, I thought he did really well. Him and Chase Elliott on the outside lane with three to go. They were making up ground. Kyle Busch went to block. It was okay. Ty Gibbs went to block. Killed the entire line. Ruined their day. So, I think if just they didn't try to block that outside line, SV, SVG was rolling, man. He had a chance. But you got if you want to pull up to the outside line, you have to pull up at the right time and not stack them up. And uh, yeah, Ty Gibbs did a pretty Ty Gibbs did a pretty bad job at at going up to the outside line and try to get the push. He did it way too late, and it just stacked everyone on the top lane. Killed that line. So it kind of ruined everyone's race. Like, on that outside line, it was what? Chase Elliott finishes 15th only because he basically, like, passed 10 cars in that final wreck. Uh, Ty Gibbs was in that outside line. Where's Kyle Busch? Kyle Busch, 26th. SVG uh, in 28th. That outside land line got annihilated, man. They could have genuinely gotten up to the front, too. So definitely a shame there. Uh, and, yeah, like, like I said, the rest of the results, the Toyotas crashed themselves. So you see Eric Jones, Bubba Wallace, Denny Hamlin, and Christopher Bell. 35th through uh, 38th in the back, but a Toyota win, so I guess it all works out for them. I'm going to leave it there. I apologize for my anger uh, towards Fox, but man, oh man, they seriously... It's, 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 it's years of frustration. It's years of frustration that's starting to get to me. I try to praise them when I can, but it's years of frustration of this production team, of the direction that Fox tries to take this sport. They're just incompetent. They just are. And then the lack of care. I don't watch, by the way, trucks and Xfinity all the time. But trust me, I try to get in there as much as I can. The truck broadcast is the worst broadcast I've ever seen. Literally, high school does a better job than that. And the, the, the Fox broadcast for Xfinity is also not very good. So it's not just the Cup Series. It's, it's, it's Fox in a hole is just dog water, okay? And they don't get better, they don't try to get better, and they continue to lead down this direction where the fans tell them, stop, this isn't what we want. Please look at NBC, please look at them actually taking the sport seriously. We don't want a six pack on Kyle Busch. We don't want cartoons. We don't want this nonsense. Please, just take it seriously. Please, don't miss Rex. Please, get show us the actual on-track action understand the flow of the race and when to go to commercial please we don't care that you want to go to commercial a million times just let us watch the certain parts of the race and i also partly blame i'm going to end the video on this because i don't want to make it too long i partly blame nascar because they had a chance to to find a way so that we could pay literally pay with our own money after all we're paying for freaking everything nowadays to pay for a commercial free premium subscription to NASCAR races that we could watch the races without commercials. The NBA does it, MLB does it, Formula One does it, uh, everyone does it. I just don't want commercials, man. I just don't, I just don't want commercials. I just don't want commercials. And they didn't do it. When they signed the new media deal, you, you still will not have an option to pay for premium, no commercial crap. So I also blame NASCAR for that. The commercials, I don't know if it was the production that put me in a bad mood or the 70% fuel saving, I did not really enjoy this race. I didn't enjoy it. It really annoyed me. The end of the race, cool. They crashed at the end. Reddick wins. But the whole way of getting up there just frustrated me. The end of the stages were cool. The merging of everyone coming out of pit lane and trying to find their track position was fun. But other than that, the rest of the long 188 laps was just nothing it's just it's just nothing is happening it's just eye candy it's just it, run around in a train or run around three right wide half throttle it doesn't really matter you just kind of run around the track so i don't know i'm in a bad mood guys i will see you tomorrow take care of yourselves enjoy the rest of your day 
Follow me on Twitter and Instagram if you're not already. Subscribe for new. And stop bookmarking that tweet on Twitter. You guys are naughty. You guys are very naughty. Take care of yourselves. Peace out.